The next speaker is Janie Gaskin uh, from Georgia Sea Turtle Center, and she actually is the director of the Sea Turtle Program and also works with student program at uh, Georgia Southern. And the title of her talk today is Gopher Tortoise Population Survey and Management on St. Catharines Island. Hello, um, my name is Janie Gaskin. I am the director of the Sea Turtle Program at St. Catharines Island, and I also work with uh, Dr. Terry Norton of the Georgia Sea Turtle Center and Dr. Tracy Tuberville. And today I'm going to talk to you about the population survey that we did on St. Catharines. St. Catharines is a 15,000 acre barrier island off the coast of middle of Georgia. It's privately owned and under conservation. It's managed by the St. Catharines Island Foundation. Um, and as I said, it's in, under conservation for research and education purposes. St. Catharines is home to the uh, longest monitored translocated gopher tortoise population in the southeast. The population started in the late 1980s when about 20 or 30 uh, wave tortoises were released on the island. The large translocation event occurred in 1994 when a group of 74 tortoises were moved to the island from a development site in Willow County, Georgia. And since 1994, approximately 50 uh, wave and rehab cases have been also released on the island. So the tortoises occupy the north pasture region of the island. So this is a 162 hectare pasture that was originally planted with Bermuda grass for cattle grazing. The cattle have since been removed and um, it's mostly the tortoises now. So uh, this area was chosen because it's the highest point on the island. It's about 20 feet above sea level. Um, it is, there have been periodic burns, but it's mostly managed by the Island Foundation through mowing. Um, and uh, possibly because of the management by mowing, the habitat has been decreased. When we did our survey in 2017, we found it was actually 108 hectares now. And this mowing results in a savanna-like grassland that you can see in this picture. So since the 1994 uh, translocation of the tourist population, the um, colony has been extensively monitored through marker capture studies, biannual trapping. Um, they've been surveyed for reproductive health, general health. There have been nutritional analyses done and genetics as well. The colony has also been the subject of many various conservation and research projects. Uh, Long-term survival has been examined, mating systems, advantage of prior residence on the island, ecology of juvenile tortoises, um, baseline blood work has been gathered. Also, eggs uh, from the nests on the island have been incubated and hatchlings have been used uh, to head start uh, populations that are de depleted in areas across Georgia. However, since the original 1994 translocation, there's been no complete borough count or population survey. So that leads us to the purpose of our project. We wanted to determine the total number of boroughs that there are on St. Catharines Island. Um, we also wanted to take advantage of being present on the island for a number of months in the tourist habitat to collect, um, to perform physical exams and collect some health data um, from any tourists we found while surveying. We also want to do, try to do as complete as possible the population count of tourists by scoping all the boroughs after the survey was completed. So we started our survey in May 2017. We aimed to complete the survey over the course of the summer. We estimated with about 100 or so tortoises that were released on the island 20 so years ago, there would be about 300 burrows. We completely discovered we were well underestimating the number of burrows. So the survey ended up continuing into the fall and winter and wasn't completed until March 2018. We did a comprehensive count. So the section that the tortoises occupy North Pasture have been previously divided into uh, five distinct sections. We subdivided these sections into transects and did shoulder to shoulder walking surveys to count all of the burrows. Um, and as I said, we, we wanted to complete it over the summer with two undergrad interns, but we ended up having to continue it uh, with volunteers until March of 2018. So every, when we would find a borough, we would assign it a unique identification number. Uh, we would also mark it with a four foot tall PVC pipe and a metal tag containing the identification number. We recorded the GPS coordinates um, of all the boroughs in a G Trimble Geo7X to be used for ArcGIS analysis, Arc analysis later. Um, we, uh, we measured the height and the width of all the boroughs to use as age approximations. So uh, for borough width, we used anything that was less than four centimeters would be a hatchling borough, anything from four centimeters to 18 would be juvenile, sub-adult would be defined as 18 to 22 centimeters, anything greater than 22 centimeters and width 
would be an adult tortoise. We also examine signs at all the burrows to determine the activity status. So if there are fresh tracks, tortoise scat, um, then we would define it as active. But if it looks like it's been a while since the tortoise was there, maybe there's some spider webs um, inactive and abandoned and collapsed burrows. So for our incidental captures to do our uh, physical exams, if we found a tortoise walking around, we would capture it by hand. Uh, we would check and see if it had any identification already. So tortoises on St. Catharines have been pit tagged and notched and assigned tortoise ID numbers. If this wasn't the case, then Dr. Norton would assign it a tortoise ID number, would notch it and pit tag it for us. He would also perform a physical exam and we would assist him in gathering measurements such as carapace length, weight, um, that kind of thing. We would also take photographs of the tortoises. So in September, when we got to about September and doing our survey, we started to wonder if all these burrows we were finding uh, were not just tortoise burrows, but possibly some armadillo burrows. Armadillos are an invasive species, as I'm sure you know. They weren't present on the island five years ago, but now they're present in increasingly large numbers. So we started setting up game cameras at burrows we considered to be active to see if they were actually active due to our armadillo occupancy of the burrow or if they were just armadillo burrows. Um, we, so this is kind of, we ended up treating it as a pilot study because we started gathering a lot of really interesting information about not just armadillos, but tourist behavior and other commensals. Um, so we went from about 10 burrows to 20 active burrows um, over the course of the pilot study. So scoping took place after the survey was finally finished at the end of March. In uh, four days, we scoped as many burrows as we possibly could. We used a tourist burrow cam. Um, we had two teams of two. We had both juvenile and adult probes so we could uh, scope even the small burrows. So for our results, we ended up marking 849 burrows, um, which is a lot more than we expected. Most of these by measurement uh, were adult or juvenile burrows. Um, if you want to work out the density of burrows in this 108 hectare pasture, for all ages, it's almost eight burrows per hectare. For just adult and sub-adult burrows, it's almost four burrows per hectare. So this is some of our GIS analysis. So you can see um, on the far side there, there's just North Pasture, and then all of the map in the middle with the yellow dots, every dot represents a tortoise burrow. And then on the side, to kind of give you a better idea of where the tortoises are clustering, here's our burrow density per hectare. So you can see here, if you compare uh, the map on this end to the map on that end, that the areas of really high burrow density are clustered in these open areas of the pasture. So these maps show the locations of hatchling and juvenile burrows versus adult and subadult. As you can see, the hatchling and juvenile burrows are a little bit more spread out. Some of them are in areas that are of more thicker canopy cover, whereas the subadult and adult burrows seem to be clustered um, really in these more open areas. So these maps show a breakdown of activity status. The green and the red dots are active and inactive burrows. And then this map closest to me, um, every yellow dot represents a burrow that we found a tortoise in when we scoped. And again, you can see that those are clustered more in these open areas. Um, we also have this weird little group um, up near North Beach that was a section we ended up having to add to our survey when we found a tortoise wandering around on the beach. And it led us to several other tortoises in these burrows. Um, so that was something that we added in. For scoping, so in four days we scoped 610 burrows. Thank you, Dr. Tuberville, for hanging in there with us. That was a lot. Um, so we, uh, that's 71% of the total of 849 burrows. Now of those 610, we were able to determine the occupancy of 552 of those. So basically what that means is some of the burrows that we came to, we weren't able to get the scope all the way to the end. Either it was collapsed, or there was something blocking it, or some burrows were, were even longer than our probes were. So we can't definitively say if there was a tortoise or not a tortoise in those, so we excluded those from our final count. So in total, we scoped 65% um, of all of the burrows. Um, so, and of these burrows, almost half of them contain tortoises. Okay, thank you. Um, almost half of them contain tortoises. Um, of the total burrows, um, that, would, that would be 30%. So looking at the scoping results, the density of all tortoises in the pasture would be 2.37 tortoises per hectare. If you want to just look at adults and subadults, that would be 1.72 tortoises per hectare. 
And that also gives us a ratio of 2.16 burrows to one tortoise. So occupancy rates, looking at just the burrows that were successfully scoped, 52% of all burrows that were labeled as active were found to have tortoises in them. Um, and of course, inactive was also higher than abandoned, which is to be expected. But I think this is really interesting that even burrows that we had classified as abandoned during the survey still had a 34% occupancy rate. So something else we did during the survey was we would also mark, um, indicate whether or not a borough had been reported before, if it had been marked before, if it was one of the original translocation sites. Um, these historical boroughs we found also had a higher occupancy rate than new, um, than new boroughs. So to break it down, occupancy rate by age, um, of all the adult boroughs we scoped, almost 70% of them had tortoises in them. Uh, the next highest uh, category was subadult, followed by juvenile, then hatchling. So to look at the, uh, to approximate the age of the tortoises we found present by scoping using the width of their burrows, the majority of the tortoises that we have are in the adult category. The next highest would actually be juvenile, 28% fit into that. And then um, we have subadult and hatchling, each with 8%. So for commensals, we were kind of disappointed with our commensal findings for the scoping. So we only found commensals in nine boroughs, um, and we only found two species. We found southern toads and cotton mice. However, the wildlife cameras gave us a lot more interesting findings and diverse findings. <laughs> with, in regards to commensal species and animals interacting with the burrows, so we actually did, were able to detect 10 species um, the, of animals that interacted with the burrows. Uh, we still had the cotton mice, and interesting thing was we were also able to capture screech owls hunting the cotton mice um, at the mouth of the burrow, which was cool. And then, of course, it also told us a lot about um, maybe why we have so many burrows and tortoises in North Pasture now. <laughs> really interesting tortoise behavior there. <laughs> <laughs> um, so for our incidental captures, our um, our uh, just general like health survey of, of tortoises we found walking about, we were able to capture 35 tortoises. Most of these were adults and most were male. Um, also interesting, 25 of these 35 were recaptured, so they've been marked before or they were rehab cases that Dr. Norton had released. So in conclusion, the St. Catharines Island tortoise population is doing really well. Um, it's, if you estimate that there are about 100 tortoises, on the island after the 1994 uh, translocation, maybe 50 or so have been added. The rehab cases, uh, the population is doubled. Uh, Gopher Tourist Council Working Group defines the minimum biophilic population as 250 adults. So we're not quite there yet, but we do fit into the category um, of primary support population. We have well exceeded the recommended density of tortoises per hectare. Even if you just look at adults and subadults, we're still at more than one tortoise per hectare. Um, the thing that we are worried about now for St. Catherine's population is the habitat size. So we've, we've decreased the habitat from 162 hectares to just 108 hectares. And we're also starting to see a lot of migration of tortoises out of the pasture, that north, pat, that north beach group that I was talking about. We're also seeing them move to other areas further south on the island. So that leads us to believe that there, there should probably be some management changes uh, with the way the habitat is managed, perhaps introducing burning, not just mechanical, um, mechanical management. And I'd really like to thank all of my co-authors and everyone, the interns who tolerate really hot temperatures in the pasture several summers, um, and everyone else who helped make this possible. Thank you.